All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam, the community manager, and today we're going to be going over three different failed account challenges. Um, there was a lot of interest around this during the, our last clubhouse hangout, so let's go ahead and get started and come over here to the dashboard. So for this particular account, you know, it was a $50,000 account, and it didn't start off too well for this trader. He started progressively going down. Um, and down and down um, until finally he hit the uh, max daily drawdown limit and believe it or not that's actually one of the most common reasons people are failing these accounts for the three accounts that we're covering today all of them um, failed due to the daily drawdown limit so what I did just to make things a little bit easier is uh, I went over to the account history and I extracted all the, the transactional data into Excel you guys can do the same uh, with your own accounts if you want your data in Excel. Um, if you want to build a model or a framework or anything with it, uh, you can go ahead and do that. So, and if you wanted to put it in order, um, like chronological order, um, just go over to the open time um, in Excel right here. Go over to data, sort sheet, and then you can sort it uh, column B, A to Z, and what that's going to do is put this all in chronological order, so it's from your first trade to your last trade. Quick tip right there. Um, so as you can see, we have all of uh, the losses right here, and we have some wins down here. And so 38 trades were taken in total of them. Three of them were winning, and 35 were losing. It's given us an average win rate of about 7.89%. Over here it says 8%. Um, it's rounded up um, to be a little more accurate. Our break-even win rate. So this is kind of important. So in order for this strategy that this guy's trading to be break-even, not even profitable, but just maintain an account balance, he needs to be winning 82.18% of the time. Well, now you may ask, well, how do I bring that percentage down? So, well, you need to have a higher risk to reward ratio to bring your break even win rate down. So, as your average risk to reward ratio goes up, your break even win rate ratio, uh, I'm sorry, your break even win rate percentage will go down. So, we can see here that his average winning trade was about $20.25, and a lot of this data is available. In the dashboard right here, twenty dollars twenty-five cents and uh, ninety-two dollars thirty-seven cents. Me personally, I prefer to put it in Excel because it's a little more malleable, um, and I can manipulate the data. So, if you're a person like me, this is definitely an option you can do, and all the data is provided to you for your particular account. Um, so, I went ahead and did a further breakdown of the instruments that he was trading. Um, he was trading specifically FX pairs, which is interesting because most people are trading indices or they're trading gold. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Um, however, we see that he has taken losses across all instruments with the biggest loss being on GBP USD. So if we were to go look at that, we can see that on GBP USD, he had opened up a five lot. I'm assuming that he was he realized that he was nearing his uh, daily drawdown limit and he wanted to save his account with this one trade. Um, let that be a disclaimer to all traders. Do not do that. It will not work out well. Um, it usually doesn't. Whenever you need a trade to just work out for you, more times than not, it will not work out for you. So my best advice would be to not do that. Um, and that's... I'm really going to cover it for this first account. Um, let's jump over to the next one. All right, so as we jump over to this second account here, we see it's another $50,000 account, and the story is a little bit differently. Um, he does start off by going into a deficit, but he's kind of struggling here for a little bit by, uh, you know, making profits, making losses. And we'll see that that's also illustrated right here. Loss, win, uh, loss, string of small wins, and then a loss. And that trend continues going forward, and we can see that illustrated right here. Um, we can see that he actually breaks out of his deficit and begins profiting on the account. 
which was very good for him. But he starts suffering a large string of losses, um, which ultimately leads to the max daily drawdown limit being hit. So if we look down into the data, see if we can find those string of losses. And yep, here it is right here. Um, you know, two $500 losses, a near $2,000 loss, $600 loss, $800 loss, $450 loss, $280 loss. Um, whereas his wins, you know, they're not, they're not really as big. You see, we got a $600 win right here. Um, but the, the wins are not nearly as big to compensate for the losses. And, you know, that's where this trader was running into, um, issues. So that would be a, an issue with his, uh, his risk to reward ratio. So let's take a look at some of these metrics and see what we find. So he had a total of 168 trades with 101 being winning and 67 uh, being losing. Now this trader didn't trade on this account very long. I believe it was less than 36 hours. So to be taking 168 trades in 36 hours, like scalping's not really for me. Um, I know some guys, they, they make a lot of money doing it. I'm not one of those people. Um, to most people, I don't recommend scalping because it's it's very stressful. Um, at least that's what I found. Scalping is very stressful. Anyways, um, the profit and loss, it was uh, minus $1,400. Um, and you, you may be asking, it's like, well, his max drawdown is 3000 It's like, well, not necessarily because his account was at uh, 53000 and it ended up falling below that um, in the span of one day. So uh, you can't do that uh, during the challenge. And that's why he he lost the account. Um, moving forward, we can see that his average risk to reward ratio was a one to 0 0.59. Um, that's not super good unless your win rate is really high. And he does have a decent win rate. He's winning 60% of the time, which is honestly pretty good um but for this particular strategy that he's trading he needs to be uh winning 62.93 percent of the time to be net zero um to be break even so the only way that he can be profitable with this strategy is to implement a higher risk to reward ratio or work to bring up his win rate now, if we look at his instruments that he was trading, he was trading a lot of gold, um, a lot of NASDAQ, 132 trades on NASDAQ, a lot of Brent. He messed around with some crypto and the one EJ trade in there just for fun. Um, primarily, though, he was trading NASDAQ 100. So let's take, a, let's take a look at this next account. All right, so for the third trader, um, he has a 200k account, which a little bit different story from the 50k, a little bit more pressure, I guess. And so he starts off pretty okay. You know, he has two trades to get him started and gets him in profit, but he very quickly falls below and then raises back above his initial balance. And he's actually going pretty well. He's up about 2000, I believe he gets, yep, here it is. He's up over $3,000 on the account. But he starts suffering a large string of losses, which sent his account uh, spiraling downward. Now, if we just take a look over at our spreadsheet right here, we can see exactly how this happened. So he had uh, two wins, two losses, brings it back below. He starts climbing out of the hole, takes a small loss, starts building back up, takes two small losses, building back up, and then here's the long string of losses. Um, what I did notice right here with these uh, string of losses is pay attention to the lot sizes. So he's going in with a 1.11, uh, right? But upon losing these, he then increases his position or his volume by three and then suffers a loss here. Then he decides to ramp up to 5.55. So he's now increased his risk by a measure of five from his initial 1.11 uh, lot sizes. This is something that I really don't recommend that anyone do really ever. Um, there's, there's a saying that you shouldn't take a, a losing trade more than one time. Um, I kind of disagree with that. You can look for re-entries and be very profitable that way. 
But when you're getting to the point of, you know, re-entering, 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 and you're losing every time um, with no stop losses, pay attention to that too, is I think what was happening is he was expecting the price to just magically go in his direction um, as he was entering. He was probably at some, uh, let's say, let's see, these were all buys, so I'm going to assume that he was at some demand level or maybe a support and he thinks that it was going to you know go into his favor and so with his logic he's like okay if i enter in with this position i'll be able to you know make all this back um since i'm entering at a lower price it's like that can work but it usually doesn't work especially when you're ramping up your risks like this not because of your strategy is bad or anything um, but you're taking these trades from a very, very emotional standpoint. And if, you know, while looking at a lot of this data, something that I've noticed is the guys who are getting very emotional about their trading and responding to it with larger volume and scaling up, those are the guys who are hitting the daily drawdown limits. And immediately after that, this is an assumption that they immediately regret it because they didn't have to do that. They could have just kept their risk the same um and because the trade didn't work out they could have just looked for the next trade but instead they didn't want to lose on that trade and it causes them to lose the account so if there's one thing that you should take away from this video it's it's okay to lose you, you can lose positions that's fine it's part of the process but what you shouldn't do is get emotional about the position and get really attached to it and say, I have to win on this or else. And I know we've all been there as far as wanting to make money on a specific trade. Like you think it looks great and you're invested in it emotionally. But what I'm saying is that type of behavior um, is not going to do you justice in this industry. It's not going to help you. Um, you should look to remove those emotions from your trading and look at things pragmatically. And you'll find that you'll get some success that way. So now that, now that we're done with uh, my little trader tip, uh, let's look at some of these metrics. So he took uh, 30 trades. Of, of them, 16 were winning, 14 were losing. His average winning trade was about $297. Um, average losing trade was around 1400 That gives him an average risk-reward ratio of about 1 to 0 0.2. So that's not super great risk reward. Again, like we really need to be in uh, prioritizing having a good risk to reward ratio because it takes the pressure off of us as traders where it's okay to deal with losses. Like for example, if you have a risk to reward ratio of 1 to 2, well, you can lose 50% of your trades and still be profitable. Um, because for every loss, for every loss you take, it's only half of the amount of your win. But when your risk reward ratio is a one to zero point two, it's like, well, every one of your wins, you need five of them to cover one loss, and that's a tough thing to do. So that's where we get this break-even win rate of eighty-three point zero nine percent. That's it's kind of setting yourself up for failure right there because it's hard to get a win rate above 80%. And if you do have one, I would ask you what your risk to reward is. And if it's high, I want to invest in you and you should probably take our challenge. Um, but the his average win rate was 53.33%. Um, so obviously he's not hitting his break even and that's what led to the deficit in his account. The only instrument that he was trading was gold, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I've noticed that traders who focus in on either one uh, one instrument or just a few instruments, they really have a solid understanding of that instrument and how it moves. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. One thing I will say, though, is maybe this trader just had a bad string or a bad string of trades or it wasn't his day. Or he just got a little too emotional and he's a good trader. So to whoever's account this is, if you are watching this, 
Um, just know that just because you failed once doesn't mean you'll fail again, and you haven't truly failed until you give up. So as long as you keep trying and keep working, and you're better than you were yesterday, you know you're on the right path. Um, none of us started out in this being super profitable. Um, we all struggled, and that's part of the game. So if you have failed an account or your account is one that I'm displaying here. Obviously, I've taken out the names to ensure your privacy. But just know that it's part of the process. You will fail. It's it's part of it. Um, but as long as you keep going and you don't give up and you keep working to get better, you haven't failed. It's just part of the process. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and we'll end this video. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for future uh, account review videos be sure to drop those in the description and if you want a video of me explaining how to kind of do this in Excel how to put the data in here I'll be more than happy to do that just leave a comment in the description and uh, we can we can get that rolling for you guys but until then you guys have a great day and thanks for watching